if you don't want Power Query, you don't want to have to refresh things, you want some kind of auto-populating unique ID on your table as you type in new data. Hi, I'm John, qualified account with 25 years real world Excel experience. And if you want to save yourself loads of time at work, then hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any of my time saving tips. So the first thing I want to do is generate for a series of functions, a ver various sets of numbers that I can combine together in different ways and then truncate into some kind of ID. So that's my approach. And I've actually not got very many columns here. And if you've got more columns, you've got a lot more flexibility. Before I start though, I want some kind of duplicate check. So I'm just going to introduce a unique duplicate count on this ID column so I can tell when I hit the point of um, uniqueness essentially in my IDs. And the way I'm going to do that is use the COUNTIF function and I'm going to count in that range how many times that individual value appears like that. Of course that's full of zeros at the moment but if I put like a one there um, if I then duplicate that, you'll see these both change to two, so I've got duplicates. And the way I can do that is put the count if at the top, so let's do that. And I'm going to say, I'm going to count if any of those values in that column there are greater than one, because one would be one occurrence of it. I'll do that. So you can see two. So let's get a shot of that. Right, so we set up now for checking if we're creating unique references or not in our data. Okay, so what you do next might depend on, you know, do you want to put this unique ID to actually mean anything or do you want it to be like completely random? Because if it's completely random, then you can sort of skip the step on the back to tell you. So in this case, I'm going to say, for a start, let's just make it equal to the date. So let's do that. Okay. Now, Let's just check how unique that date is. So I'll click on there to pick it up and you can see 3,300 duplicate entries, clearly not very unique at all. So that's no good to me. So let's merge that with, um, say, the first letter of the customer name. Now, rather than have that as a letter, let's make this a numeric code because it's going to be a lot easier to work with. So we can do that by using the function code. And now if we just click on customer name there, it's just gonna pick up the first letter. So the one I've picked there in A, and it'll tell you the character code of a letter A. So let's do that. Now you can see it's changed our date into a number, which is great. So we don't need to use any other functions for that. And it's reduced our duplicate count down to 844. Certainly not unique, but it's far better than it was. So this will, if I now sort by this order here, you can see we've got a sort now, which is date, then customer alphabetically by the first letter. So we've got some kind of meaningful sort order. Let's just undo that so it's a bit more random. Right, so now we want to generate some more numbers from our you know, information in the row. So one way we could do that is to look at the len function because the len function will give you the length or the number of characters in a string of text. So for example, we could say the length of the customer name field. And although we're not getting anything unique, we're getting you know, a variety of numbers. So we could, for example, multiply that by another length, perhaps the length of the product name field. And now we're getting something that, you know, clearly got a lot of duplicates in it, but it's a bit better. Another thing that we've got that's fairly unique, uh, may potentially be unique, is the order value. And, you know, it's a bit messy at the moment. There's a lot of digits and stuff. So perhaps we need to round that. So if we take like a round version of the order value, we'll round it to no decimal places. So we get whole numbers. And perhaps if we now say, let's multiply those two numbers together. Now we've got something that is much higher potential of being unique. All of the functions I use here are in my 33 fantastic functions for Excel cheat sheet. 
And if you did need any other functions, they're all in the all functions library as well that comes with the download. So the link's in the description, get your hands on that, save yourself a whole load of time and effort in Excel because I've categorized it all. And I don't think you actually need to learn any more functions unless you've got some kind of niche application. So let's go back to our unique ID now, but let's just merge that with our formula that we've just created. And straight away, we've actually hit on a unique combination. Now, there's no duplicates in that data. Now, although we do have a unique ID, it's far from ideal. For a start, everything begins with a four, okay? And they're different length digits, and they're very, very long numbers for a table that's only actually got about 3,000 rows in it at the moment. Yeah, even if it was 30,000 rows, you'd say this is a long, unique ID. So I think we can do a lot better than this. So the first thing is we definitely don't need the four for a start. So we know that we can extract, we can remove that off the beginning and we'll still, you know, we'll still work in a, as a sort order. And so one of the ways we can do that is use the mid function on it. So we'll say the mid of this text, and that allows us to take something out of the middle. And we're going to say we want to start the second digit. Now we know that our just our sort order part of the ID was what seven digits long. So we know that, and although we've chopped the first number off, we still need at least six digits. So if we go back to the first six, we've essentially just replicated that unique ID and we've got the same amount of duplicates. So we know we need to go up from there. So let's pick seven characters and see how we go. Right, we're now down to 136 duplicates. Let's now pick eight characters. Right, we're now down to 10 duplicates. What about if we pick nine characters? We've hit back on a unique ID now with nine characters. So we know that nine is the minimum amount of characters using this function that's gonna give us a unique ID. So I would always say go one more because you know if you go now to a 10 character, number, you know you've got an order of magnitude, potentially more room in that unique ID. Okay. And we can add, say, a reference on the front by just putting like UID um, and an ampersand symbol. And we now have like this sort of unique ID here that's self-generating. Is it definitely self-generating? Let's just check. So let's go back to our new data, copy that, and we'll go all the way to the bottom and we'll paste it on here. All of these unique IDs are generating by themselves and we've still got no duplicates. So complete success. Now you can potentially do all of this in one column because these of course are help columns with different formulas in. They're not necessarily relevant to generating that ID. That ID, you could combine all of these functions into a single formula and use it. And you may also want to check if it's unique when you add new data and retains its uniqueness. And if you've got uh, the unique formula, you can do something better than have an extra column because you could literally do a count of the column entries minus the count of the unique column entries. So for example, if I said, um, count of this, right? Or count A to be more precise, count our text, right? That will give me 5,000 entries, as you can see. And then if I deduct from that a count of, sorry, count A <laughs> of the unique items in the column, that one there, that should be zero. So we've got an inbuilt duplicate check straight away there as well. Hopefully that was useful, save you a bit of time generating automatic references for your data and save you having to do a whole load of copy and pasting every time new data is coming in. If you want to save more time in Excel, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon and I will see you in the next video shortly.